At six, he was the center of the country's most expensive manhunts. 25 years ago, Eric Rudolph detonated a bomb full of nails at the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. And that was just the beginning of a series of bombings, and the investigation ultimately led back here to North Carolina. Rudolph was eventually caught in Murphy, North Carolina, where he admitted to bombing the Olympics, killing one, and then going on to bomb a gay nightclub and an abortion clinic in Atlanta. He'd eventually bombed a Birmingham, Alabama abortion clinic in 1998. That blast killed a police officer. Witnesses spotted Rudolph there, and he took off for home, right into the mountains of western North Carolina. That manhunt lasted five years in the mountains surrounding the town of Murphy. Fox 46 investigator Jody Barr is in Murphy tonight, where he breaks down the search efforts of 200 federal agents that were so close to catching Rudolph that he could kill them. Eric Rudolph was at times only yards away from this building while federal agents were inside planning his capture. Rudolph later wrote that he saw himself as a soldier in God's army fighting against the abortion industry, against what he called the homosexual agenda and the government. He says he saw condoning it. Eric Rudolph wanted to send a message. Radicalized by his religious ideology, Rudolph appointed himself as the man who'd fight the federal government in the war to end abortion. <laughs> Rudolph's pipe bomb at the 1996 Olympics was meant to end the games. The bombing caused a one-day pause, but even as federal investigators worked the investigation, the games continued. The four other bombs were also designed to convince the government to see things Rudolph's way. Rudolph never killed a federal agent during his bombing spree, but he got the chance during his five-year run as a fugitive in the North Carolina mountains. This is an artist's rendition of him, and here's the old map of Murphy and Andrews. North Carolina that we use. Charlotte FBI Special Agent in Charge Chris Swecker led the Bureau's Fugitive Task Force in the hunt for Rudolph. Swecker didn't know it at the time, but Rudolph had a plan to kill him and his agents. Rudolph took aim at the FBI's Murphy, North Carolina headquarters. He planted a bomb outside the door, and with a remote controller, Rudolph waited and watched from this ridge across the highway. He'd stalked the building for months, long enough that Rudolph wrote he'd unknowingly come to humanize Todd Letcher, one of the FBI agents who worked out of the building each day. In November 2000, Rudolph hit a 40-pound bomb in these bushes outside the door, then sat on the ridge waiting to detonate it. Agent Letcher showed up the next morning and walked right past the bomb. But Rudolph, the nation's most wanted serial bomber, could not go through with it. He watches as the agent walks up to the door and his fingers is about an inch over the detonator, but he decides not to detonate it. Rudolph was very close, if that story is true, to potentially taking the life of an FBI agent. Do y'all have any reason to believe that his story of that night planting that bomb is not true? I think the story is probably true because we found the IEDs later up in the general area where he said he, you know, he watched the, the, you know, the command post. He described Todd Letcher to the T. Uh, certain characteristics, physical characteristics were accurate. And from his vantage point, he would have been able to look down on the, what was then the headquarters of the task force. I think that's one of the most dramatic things that have come out of his, you know, his story since he was arrested. Rudolph's bombings left permanent scars with the death of Alice Hawthorne in Atlanta and police officer Sandy Sanderson in Birmingham and the nail impressions from the Centennial Park pipe bombs still there today. But Rudolph lost the war he waged. What do you think is Eric Rudolph's legacy? The legacy, of course, is one of destruction. I hate to say it because he's a former client of mine. Unfortunately for him, it was not effective in terms of the goals that he had in mind because everything is happening exactly the opposite of what he hoped would happen. He didn't change a thing? No, except that his actions destroyed a lot of lives, including his. 
Eric Rudolph killed two and injured more than 100 others before he went on the run here in North Carolina. Coming up at 10, we'll show you how Eric Rudolph outran 200 federal agents, but he could not outsmart the rookie cop who took him down. From Murphy, North Carolina, Jody Barr, Fox 46 Investigates. And Jody has also put together one of the most in-depth online stories surrounding the Eric Rudolph investigation and the five-year manhunt that Fox 46 has ever done. You can find it right now on Fox46.com.